Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Saviors Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Saviors is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ, whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us. Our traditional worship will begin in a few moments. Good morning, our saviors. Welcome to worship. And of course, we say good morning to those who join us from afar on television and on Facebook Live. And as we're saying welcome, we need to say a special word of welcome to Joseph Lamour, who's in the balcony, serving as our accompanist today, filling in for our organist, Christopher Larson. So would you give him a warm, our saviors, welcome? It's, it's like we've got the French connection in the balcony because we have Lamour and Lavasser up there today. So I've got high expectations, guys. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Of course, our rejoicing brings us here to the font where we, we remember that every human thing is touched somehow by sinfulness. Some sinfulness is the failure of a whole society, but much more is personal. Our individual regrets, our harmful ignorance. Yet before there were sinners in this place, God prepared the land with affection. The sacred hills threw rocky palms into the sky to praise the God of love. And God laced the land with rivers to feed all life. This God blesses us with mercy. This is where our gratitude is rooted. God pours out mercy like rain and demands mercy like thunder. You know, in ancient Israel, the river was the sign of God's mercy, God's power over the captors in Egypt, God's separation from the agony of slavery, God's healing renewal for the diseased and the sinful. In this place, too, God's mercy flows through the water where Christ meets both sinner and saint. When we thirst for renewal, God washes us in mercy. When old wounds feel fresh, God washes us in mercy. When the buried past poisons our conscience, God washes us in mercy. When the land cracks and the crops wither, God washes us in mercy. At this font, all people can return to God's healing water, a cool drink for your spirit, regeneration for every cell in your body, reconciliation for every society. Christ Jesus, you died to create new hope for harmony. Plant us beside your river of mercy so our roots drink deeply from new life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to stand and share that gift of peace with one another.
I invite you to remain standing as we put our voices together in praise. <clears throat> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please pray with me. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. You may be seated, and I invite children to come and join me for Kid Talk here on the steps. All right. I should say children and those who consider themselves children at heart, but you know. Well, good morning. I am so glad to have you join me today. I, I have to tell you, I'm thinking about sparrows today. Do you know what a sparrow is? Yeah, what is it, Jacob? It's a type of bird. If you're not quite sure what a sparrow looks like, I brought a picture along. You maybe have seen sparrows before. They're sort of small birds that we see a lot of around here. I mean, they're everywhere. If you have a bird feeder at home, you've probably seen lots of sparrows. They love bird feeders. So, I don't know that you can really tell by this picture, but how big do you think a sparrow is? What do you think? Like that big? That might be a little bigger than sparrows are. If you hold your hand out, Your hands are about the right size for a sparrow to fit in them very comfortably. They're not very big at all. Well, the reason I'm thinking about sparrows today is because Jesus actually talks about sparrows in the story that we're going to read in a little bit. And what he says is important for you to hear and to think about. He says that even though sparrows are small and not very valuable when you compare them to other things in the world, God still notices every single one. Because God made every sparrow, just as God made everything there is that exists. And that's how loving God is. God loves whatever God makes. And that's important for us to hear because I would bet that there are times when you guys feel small. Am I right? Yeah? Like you might not have a whole lot to offer because you're younger and you're smaller compared to other adults, for example. But you know what? Us adults, we can feel that way too sometimes, kind of small, like we don't have a lot to offer. But Jesus says, and this is the part I want you to remember, that just as God pays attention to every sparrow, God also knows you better than you know yourself, and God cares for you like nobody else Last night, I don't know why, but for some reason I had a hard time falling asleep. Does that ever happen to you? All the time. So what do you do? How do you get to sleep? You just snuggle with your pillow and wait till you fall asleep. So you're patient. Well, last night I was trying to be patient, but it wasn't working. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to count. Have you ever counted sheep before? That's sometimes suggested as something to do when you can't fall asleep. But rather than sheep, you know what I counted? I counted sparrows. I did. Because last night when I led worship, there was a song that was sung about sparrows, and the song is going to be sung in just a little bit, that says, God's eyes are on the sparrow, and I know God is watching me. So as I was counting sparrows in my head, I was remembering those words. God's eyes are on the sparrow, and I know God is watching me. And you know what? With that tune in my heart and the promise that comes with it, I fell asleep. It took a while, but I got there. (laughs) I hope, I hope that when you spot a sparrow, out wherever you're doing, riding bike, playing in the yard, going on trips with your families, you'll always remember that God knows you and God loves you just like God loves every last sparrow. Shall we pray? 
Let's pray a prayer where I say something and you repeat it. We all pray together. Dear God, thank you for sparrows and for watching over us just like you watch over them. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. You can head back to your seats. God speaks to us in scripture, preaching, song, and prayer. A reading from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, 
he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. And whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves their child more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I'm not sure about you, but after a reading like that, I feel the need to pray. So will you join me? God of truth uncovered, you trace the sparrow's flight and plumb the secret places of the heart. Bring our fear and conflict into the light of your presence. Help us to lose our hollow life and find our way to you. Amen. Boy, oh boy, what have we gotten ourselves into, my friends? Jesus' words today, as we read them from Matthew, are terse, they're provocative. In fact, to me, he sounds a little grumpy, like he ate something that didn't quite agree with him. But he's at a point in his ministry where he's coaching up the 12 disciples prior to sending them out on a mission of proclaiming the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. But he tells them, 
The mission of Team Jesus won't be easy. In fact, it likely will cause division and unrest. It might even lead to the cross. Does that sound like what you signed up for, our saviors? In this day and age, we in this country for sure know a thing or two about division. We struggle so to find common ground. And the art of compromise for the sake of the common good seems like it's all but lost as we draw lines and take up sides based on politics or religion or economics or race or gender or what have you. But what's true at the level of community is also true for families these days. Some families can no longer celebrate holidays together. Maybe it's because family members have taken different paths religiously. So Christmas, for instance, means something different to different people. Some perhaps remain in the faith tradition of their upbringing, while others have renounced their faith altogether. Sometimes young people can clash with their parents because their generation sees things differently with regard to things like showing kindness to strangers or a sense of duty and responsibility to others or the fair and just treatment of all of God's people or concern for the environment or issues related to human sexuality. Much of the division that we are experiencing today, however, seems to me like it's the result of giving in to the temptation of believing that I have a corner on the truth. And you know, if I have the corner on the truth, that means the rest of you don't. So the lines are easily drawn as a result. And the chances of reaching mutual understanding become remote at best. Coach Jesus, though, isn't necessarily talking about the divisions that come about because of our arrogance or our stubbornness. He's telling his team that their very presence in the world and the message that they will be proclaiming, that the kingdom of heaven has come near, will actually breed division because they and their message will be at odds with the powers of this world. Governments will seek to silence them, perhaps even violently. Religious institutions will actively resist and denounce them. And even more scandalous than that, the claims of the gospel may even split families because the gospel, Jesus says, must take priority and precedence over all other loyalties and devotions, even the love that is shared between parent and child. Again, I need to ask, does that sound like what you signed up for? To be honest, it's easy for me to gloss over this part of what it means to be a follower of Jesus because I'm kind of partial to my family. <laughs> I like them a lot, and I try my level best not to do anything that would jeopardize our relationships with each other. But here's the deal. What I hear Jesus teaching his disciples and us about being on Team Jesus is that when we allow anything at all to become more important than the mission of the gospel, we find it all too easy to fit the gospel into our categories and thereby lose the universal impact of the message of God's love. 
Oh, we hold for ourselves the gospel good news, and we cherish the gift that we've been given in the waters of baptism. I mean, it feels really good to know that we have been forgiven. But then, so often, we go on to live in ways that are counter to the gospel. I mean, history tells that story all too well. We organize ourselves into invading armies and seek to take over the world in the name of Jesus. We assign less value to some people in the world and then rationalize that owning and trading them as property and stripping them of their human rights is somehow in line with God's vision for the world. We set up systems of commerce designed to create wealth, but often on the backs of those who will never experience it and at the expense of the environment. We even perpetuate the evils of inequity and injustice by ignoring or denying they exist, or worse yet, believing that they exist for good reason. When this becomes the way we live in the world, we ignore the parts of God's plan to love and redeem all of creation that we find inconvenient to our pursuits of status and power and privilege. And when that happens, we find ourselves in violation of team policy, if you want to work with the metaphor. And as Jesus points out, on the wrong side of grace, And that's not at all what we signed up for. The good news carried within this difficult word, however, is that the mission of the gospel is grounded in the promise of a God who will stop at nothing to love this divided, broken world, which, mind you, carries upon it the very fingerprint of God. Consider the sparrow, Jesus said. They are relatively small and insignificant, yet every single one of them captures the loving attention of the Creator. And so it is with you and the rest of creation. God sees within you and everything that God has made an intrinsic value that is worth more than any other worldly pursuit. That's why Coach Jesus demands our utmost loyalty to Team Jesus, because there's nothing in this world more important than proclaiming that all of creation is loved by the Creator. There is nothing in this world more important than sharing that there is no shame that cannot be overcome. There is nothing in this world more important than declaring that there is no hurt that cannot be healed. Indeed, there's nothing in this world more important than announcing from the rooftops that death does not have the the final word. The extravagant promise of God contained within the gospel good news is exactly what a broken and divided world needs. In fact, it's the world's only hope. And we are the ones whom Jesus has chosen and is sending out to get that job done. It's not at all lost on me that three times in this relatively brief passage that Jesus tells his disciples and us not to be afraid. It's as though he's saying, I know what I'm asking you to do is not easy. In fact, it could very well be dangerous for you. 
It is not a way to win friends and influence people. In fact, in the end, it might cost you everything. But what I am calling you into is nothing less than a different way of being in the world, a different way of doing life in the world. Yes, it's hard because everything you've ever known will become unstable when you follow my way. But my way is the way of love, not the way of the world. A love so expansive that everyone has a place at the table. A love so relentless that not one sparrow ever goes unnoticed. A love so powerful that sins are forgiven and death has lost its sting once and for all. Do not be afraid, Jesus tells us. I've got this. Together, we've got this. And yes, this is what we signed up for. Thanks be to God. Amen. join you because last week at this time I was home with the case of food poisoning, which I do not recommend. And, you know, while missing you last week, um, I mean, that's why I'm so glad that I get to rejoin you in this particular moment when we get to enter into some of the symbols of our, of our unity as, as a family at church, because it is good to be back with you uh, and to be on more stable ground this morning. Please stand as you're able. People of God, the promised advocate, the Holy Spirit, rests upon each one of you, animates our faith, and calls us into ministry for the sake of the world. So we boldly proclaim our faith because we trust the same Spirit will transform our words into deeds of mercy and love. Please join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You know, in his sermon today, Pastor Randy calls us to think about Jesus' challenging words. When we follow God, God calls us to step out on a limb. And the farther you get on, on the limb, the more vulnerable you are. So as we contemplate that calling for each of our lives, I want you to remember that the power you have to accomplish these things of God comes from the protection and love that God offers you every day. With this in mind, let's pray. Holy Spirit, when Jesus walked the earth, you descended upon him in the form of a common bird, a pigeon or a dove. And you fly through our lives much the same way. You flit on the edge of our vision unnoticed. You perch quietly in the midnight branches of our hearts. You hover high above us, listening to the emotions deep beneath our surface and scanning us with perspective we cannot achieve on our own. So we ask you, Spirit of mercy, descend upon us now. We are like sparrows with lives short and fragile. Everything good we take from your open hand. Scatter good seed upon the ground so the earth can grow fruitful and strong and all your creatures can feast on a rich harvest. Spirit of mercy, descend upon us now. Give us rain to wash away the dust that clings to us. Bathe our spirits fresh and cool. Heal dry earth with life-giving water. Spirit of mercy, descend upon us now. Sing the joyful song alongside us as we celebrate new life for our siblings. Nora Kosan baptized this weekend. Carson Norgard and Margot Fries married here on Friday. Spirit of mercy, descend upon us now. Because we are flighty and fearful, we need your protection. Wrap us in the warm shelter of your wings today. Surround our sickly friends with healing. Bring comfort to those wounded by the world and all who are hospitalized, including Larry Jacobson, John Line, Sharon DeVries, Sam Howard, Dennis Carrup, and Arthur Dell Engman. Send sympathy to those who find their lives a little emptier this week, including the families of Donna Bukins and Gladeth Hochstetter, and Nancy and Larry Elverud on the death of Nancy's mother, Luann Overbust. Spirit of mercy, descend upon us now. This day will come with a little bit of trouble or much. Our work will yield very little fruit or much. Our days will fill with a little worry or much. You are there always to soften our anger, soothe our fever, and make us new in you again. Thank you, God. Amen. You may be seated. So in mere moments, we're going to receive today's offering. Anytime you give a gift, that you're stepping out on that limb. So when you do that today, don't worry how to act or whether your gift is enough. Just remember that the Spirit is with you, and the Spirit calls us to give. Let God translate your money, your time, your talents into the message of hope the world has always needed, or offerings received.
please join me in a prayer for all God's faithfulness and a blessing on all our gifts. God, we give you these gifts so you can multiply our ministry. We offer our creativity so you can grow our possibilities. We offer our future so you can care for us today. We even offer our fear so you can grow our faithfulness. We offer our thanksgiving as we feast on harvest blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Stand as is comfortable for you, my friends. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks for it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks for it, gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sins. So do this to remember me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. My friends, there is plenty of food on the table, and all of it nourishes well. Now every open hand will fill with good gifts. Our work is good and abundant, but God's mercy never runs dry. So come to this table to enjoy what God gives. You'll feel your life multiply. All are welcome to come join us at the Holy Meal. Good morning and Lenten blessings to each of you from our saviors here in Sioux Falls. As you probably heard earlier in worship, we're focusing on questions during Lent as an exercise in going deeper in our faith. What do you think stirred within you today that helped you decide to join us for worship? Is worshiping with us, even if it's from a distance, a spiritual discipline that you try to prioritize? Is there something going on in your life right now for which you are seeking spiritual guidance? Did you sense a special nudge from the Holy Spirit encouraging you to tune in as a way of reconnecting with a portion of your life that maybe feels distant or even absent? Whatever the reason, we're glad you're here. We believe it was the Holy Spirit that brought us together, and we hope that this time that we've shared has affirmed for you the truth that we profess, that God loves you and will stop at nothing to be in relationship with you. Everything we do here at Our Saviors is part of proclaiming that truth, and the impact of our proclamation increases when we partner together to make it all happen. 
What would it mean for you to become a sustaining partner in this ministry of sharing the good news of God's love? Imagine the impact you could help provide by giving a portion of what God has given you in support of this ministry that we share. You can give securely online or by text right now. Just follow the directions that appear on your screen. If you already contribute to our ministry, would you consider increasing your gift as a way of broadening the impact of our mission? If you'd like to do that, simply call Barb Haugen and she'll help update your offering. Thanks for giving all of that some prayerful thought and once again for joining us today. As you move into the week ahead, let this question guide you. How will you be God's presence in the world. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Once we have eaten the fruit of the earth, we possess the seeds for the next harvest. Please pray with me. God, after this meal of hope, help us sow seeds of patience in this place. Water the kernels of courage planted deep in our hearts. And in these rows of faithful people, sprout your hope so we can grow the joyful future you have planned for your church. Amen. You know, especially in these summer months, it's a privilege to share this time with you in worship. You can be anywhere, but God called you to spend time with this community. So here's your invitation to other great opportunities in this place. You know, we're still buzzing from our last summer blast a couple weeks ago. It was such a great event. A reminder, our next event, our next summer blast is July 12th and will include a blessing of pets. So I don't know what that looks like for you. Like maybe it's a Maybe it's a goldfish or an iguana. And maybe it's your hamster or your finch or your cow. You know, whatever it is. Bring it on July 12th and we'll bless it. <laughs> It'll be really cool. I wonder if you studied abroad or if you have ever hosted an exchange student. If so, then you know the power of a transcultural learning experience. And uh, the organization Nacelle Open Door has approached us to tell us they need a host family for a student who arrives this fall to attend high school in Sioux Falls. Tessa plays cello and hopes to play in an orchestra when she arrives here from Germany. And you can contact the church office to learn more about hosting her. They've got all the information, and it's just kind of too much to tell you about right now. So call into the church office if that sounds interesting to you. Before worship, I looked, and it told me there were four seats left to our trip to Target Field on July 26th to see the Minnesota Twins, and, uh, you know, they need some prayers. They need some help, and you can be a part of that journey. So get your spot on the bus on July 26th. There's a, a handful of spots left, and you can sign up at the Welcome Center before you leave today. Maybe you're interested in doing something a little bit closer to home, and then I got two things for you to think about. First, come to our family movie night this Wednesday, June 28th at 7 to watch the Muppet movie in the Holy Word Theater. Um, it's such a great time to do that. Or check out Theology Tapped on Thursday, June 29th, 7 to 8.30 at Monk's Ale House. Now, if you've never been to Theology Tapped before, 
you bring a question, you buy a drink of your choice, hang out with Pastor Randy and a bunch of other great people from church, and just talk in an informal way about your faith. And if you've never been to the family movie night on Wednesday, well, we got Muppets, so (laughs) what more could you want? This weekend, we're celebrating the career of our gifted business administrator, Barb Haugen. We, we just had a car chow and reception for her. She retires from OSL at the end of June. And if, if you missed your chance to say hi, just swing by the office during the week or send her a card personally, and we will thank her for her 20-plus faithful years of service to this congregation. And let's, let's just say thank you in this moment, too. Man. Finally, before you leave, check out our lost and found table in the gathering place to claim your stuff. You thought it was lost, long gone, but it's been found. <laughs> it's just waiting for you over there. And now, my friends, it's time to go out in the world. And when you go, go to speak joy. Go to bless with kindness. Go to give the patience that is in such short, short supply in this world. Go to suffer alongside the wounded. Go to speak words of love. Go to tell what God has done and to complete what you have left undone and go with God's blessing to love and serve the world. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.